Thank you so much. Jerry Seinfeld is a very likable and inventive young comic who has been working uh, all across the United States in nightclubs and on other television programs. Yes, there are other television programs. <laughs> this is his first appearance on our show, and we're very glad he's here. Please welcome a very funny gentleman, Mr. Jerry Seinfeld. I love this crowd. I love you right off the bat. I'm very, I'm very glad to be here because, because. And I'll tell you exactly why, because this is New York, it's spring, isn't this? Don't you feel it? Don't you feel it? That certain spring thing. I was watching the weather report before I came in tonight, and I, I really feel for these guys that do the weather, because let's face it, it's a tough job. They have to make this thing sound important. They're on the news, you know what I mean? So the guy comes out and he's got maps. Well, we have a high, we have a low. We have a front coming in soon. And, and then my favorite part, the satellite photo. Now this is really helpful, huh? <laughs> what is that? It's a photograph of the Earth from 10,000 miles away. Can you tell if you should take a sweater or not from that shot? <laughs> I have no idea. If I really need to know the weather, I watch Romper Room. The kitty show, they lay it on the line. I mean, if the little willy guy in the wall gets a raincoat, I know what's happening. <laughs> I like it that way, I like it simple. I'm living in L.A. now, and uh, I don't know if you've ever been there. The weather there doesn't change that much, and the weather guy there is the most frustrated guy in television. This guy, he's got nothing to say. You know what I mean? The poor guy comes out night after night. Here's Dave Wilson with the weather. Same, same weather. <laughs> Tomorrow's the same, too. Back to you, Bob. The guy doesn't even show up for work half the time. You know what I mean? They go to his house. He's got the Hawaiian shirt, can of beer. Ksh, same. <laughs> I told you yesterday. I grew up right here. I grew up on Long Island. Thank you. It's the only place you can count on. Yeah, and I, uh, I have contacts now. I had uh, glasses when I was 10 years old. And you know, you, I don't know if you ever had something like that. Glasses at 10, you know, somebody puts something on your face at 10, you leave it there. You don't know the difference. I thought I was getting glasses because I couldn't tell what my parents looked like. Because every time I'd ask my mother to buy me something, she'd say, what do I look like, a bank? <laughs> and you know what I was thinking? I'll tell you. When you're 10, your parents are the bank. You know what I mean? If I'm 10 and I need money, could I walk in and chase my and get money? The teller's just gonna say to me, what do I look like, your mother? <laughs> Take the road, Four Eyes. <laughs> I also had braces. I want you to get this picture now, okay? Glasses at 10, braces at 12. I was thrilled to have these things on my face. I mean, you know, you're thinking about talking to a girl for the very first time in my life. I want a lot of corrective apparatus on my head. <laughs> this is what women like. I, I said to my parents, let's not stop now. <laughs> let's get me a hearing aid off the Peter Schroeder. like a human science project, you know. <laughs> Appearance plagues us, you know, all through your life. You worry, how do I look? I don't know. I feel like I want to help sometimes. This, I don't know, every time I go to an ice cream stand, doesn't this happen to you? There is always one tremendously fat person there. And I don't mean to be cruel, I want to help. Do you ever feel that? Do you want to, I just want to walk up and say, excuse me, I don't know you. Do you think you really need it? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, there are limits of this that, you know, people have probed. Have you ever seen the Guinness Book of World's Records, the fattest man in the world? This is unbelievable. According to the Guinness Book, anyway, the fattest man is Bob Hughes, 1,400 pounds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the man has let himself go. <laughs> Come on, Bob, have a salad, do something. <laughs> One light. I, I, I'm telling, I used to not even want to talk about this guy because I thought it might be offensive, you know, to somebody in the audience. And then I thought about it, you could be in the audience, you could weigh a thousand pounds, you know, and still go, he's not talking about me. <laughs> this is a man with a serious weight problem. 
But I hope that someday, I'm hoping for Bob, I'm pulling for him. I want him to go on a diet, take off a couple hundred pounds. <laughs> Do you realize 200 pounds does not make a dent on this guy? If you're a friend of his, what would you say to him? You know, you look great, Bob. <laughs> what are you down to, 1,200 now? <laughs> And what is he gonna say in response? And you know, I feel terrific. <laughs> Thank you very much. Jerry Seinfeld, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice. You ever get a loan from the Libyans? No. <laughs> Good. We'll be right back. Jerry, you're going to um, Dallas, Texas? Dallas, June 1 through 6. We in the business, we say one, we haven't got time to say first. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it'll be pretty much the first week in June. Yes, yes. Is there, there's a club down there you're working? I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you have a club in Dallas, phone and Jerry will come by. Uh, I want to thank everybody who was here tonight.